Hi guys, Harley here again. Today, we're gonna to be cooking a mini roast. It's gonna be a chicken mini roast. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna start with our vegetables, our carrots and our broccoli. So if we get a broccoli head, which is over there, I'm gonna show you how to cut the raw one, and then it's already done just off my side here. Then how we can work this is we see we've got the full broccoli there. If we can kind of keep these on the stems if possible, if you've got a small paring knife, that's better, but we can just cut it in here with your hand. You can then just take it off. You see this size is a very good size for your broccoli. If you like it smaller, don't forget if you cut it small, it's gonna cut quicker. So let me do this this way for you so I can show you the stem. If we can cut down as we would, keeping the fingers to the side, and we cut onto our stems, okay? So our stems are always on there because the stems have got so much goodness and taste in them that a lot of people would just chop the stem straight off and chuck that. You see, with this stem here, you can even use that the next day for a soup, a broccoli soup or something like that. So keep our stems and also try and keep as much on there as possible. They're a perfect size. So there's the raw one that we have. We put them in some water into a pot which will probably be about this big. Boil your water with a kettle. You're gonna put your broccoli in there, cover it over. They're gonna cook for about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes until you can feel them and you'll be able to feel that they're soft. If you still don't think that they're right, what we can do, take a bit off. Good, good. Same with our carrots. So with a carrot, we'll get a raw carrot as I'll show you this here from my side, thank you all. And then, let me move these out of the way for you guys. We can again take the top of it off. We'll peel it down with a peeler. And then if we cut it into little sections like so, and then hands on the side or down the side so they're safe. This is what we need to be looking at. A knife goes through and we can take our time with this, okay? We can really take our time with this. There we go, and we're through. So we don't want to be touching our fingers, chopping our fingers. We'll get this bit here. Do not put it on the rolling edge, okay? As we see, me trying to cut this is very dangerous. It's, it's not going to happen. If we switch it over to our balanced side as such, then we can do the same again. Hands on the side. And there we have two nice carrots there. And then that's what we can do with that. We'll do the same with the pot. Carrots in, in they go. Fill it with the water so it's above boiling water. That will take about 10 minutes on a medium heat. That's a medium heat for your broccoli, medium heat for your carrots. If you want your water to heat up quicker and your things to, whatever's in there, vegetables to cook quicker, add a little bit of salt. Two bits of salt, bang, bang, in you go to the water. Let that go for 10 minutes, okay? Now, what we're gonna move on to, guys, is cooking the chicken. So first of all, we need a pan. We're gonna need some oil also. We'll leave that on the side for the time being. As long as we can get that ready, you can light up your stove, put it on a small low heat, get it ready, get it cooking. And what we're gonna do with our chicken is we're gonna butterfly it, okay? It's called butterflying because we're gonna chop it in half and make it look like a butterfly, okay? So from this angle here, I'm gonna move this over for you guys. I'm gonna move my bin quickly. I'm gonna bring it quite forward for you. As we see from the chicken here, we have all the white bits that are like the fat bits, okay? All this bit here. If you don't want them and you can see them, we can give them a nice little diagonal cut there, okay? Because when you're eating your chicken, the bits there that are a bit more chewy and a bit more gristly, you'll see, are these white bits, and that's what it is. So if we cut that off, we'll have a nice bit of chicken here. You don't have to do it to it all, but if you just see a big bit, see that bit's fine there. You can have a bit of the skin there and the fat there, so I'd cut that off. No worries, straight in our bin. Then what we want to do from the side, from this side, is cut through and down the middle. But what we're going to do is take it nice and slowly to start off with. So, you see how that's just open with hardly any cut. What we'll do is we'll keep going slower and we'll keep trying to make that cut up so we can keep folding them out. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. We can just keep doing this, and we can keep cutting them. Now, technically, we want one straight cut to go through so it opens out. But for this example here for you guys, we're just gonna keep doing a little bit of cuts, 
a little bit of cuts you see because now what we're working with is an even sized chicken this should all cook at the same time maybe this side may cook a little bit quicker because this is a bit bigger this side so then we can just keep butterflying that there there we go so you guys can work with this kind of butterfly chicken okay the actual fact of it what we want to be looking at like is like this if we do the same thing we clean it we do that but then we do one there and across he goes bang so then in turn that's what we want him to look like as we're doing it slower we can make those other cuts if needed so everything is folded out and it can cook properly and evenly okay guys right so we're gonna leave this on the side we're gonna go wash our hands for two seconds because we've been handling raw meat which then we're gonna handle stuff over here we need to wash our hands so one second guys so there we go quick wash of the hands always because we washed our hands before and we should always wash our hands before the cleanliness is a main aspect of cooking also is our ventilation if you have a door window a vent please get it open we don't need to be setting off any fire alarms it's also going to be better for your breathing you don't want to be breathing in smoke if you are smoking something up okay so from here we're going to get some olive oil we're going to get our pan we're going to put a nice helping nice couple of pours of this as we would do spin it around so it goes all around the pan okay so your pan can be covered with the oil with chicken we would want to add a little bit more oil than we would cooking a fish or something like that because a, a chicken may stick more okay so we're going to put this on a medium to high heat to start we're not going to worry about nothing else on this side we're just going to concentrate on this pan for the minute because it's got quite a bit of oil in it that we usually would be working with plus we've turned it up to a medium to high heat Therefore, within a second, this oil is going to be very hot and dangerous. So here we go. As we can see, as we can see there, guys, it's coming along. You can see the bubbles forming in that bit there. And we'll keep it going. We need to check the heat is fine. We will never put a hand into the pan. Never hand in the pan that way. If you fall, slip, stick your hand backwards. Won't stick. In it goes. And we can just keep it above. Once you can feel the heat on your hand, you don't have to go all the way in. You can leave it there, just above. And you can feel the heat's fine. Okay? As we see here, guys, we have a little bit of smoke now. We're smoking. This is the part of the ventilation that we need the ventilation so it will go out. The oil is working. We're going to turn your heat down to a low. Like we said in the other ones, or if you've not seen any of the other videos, if you're not confident in keeping the oil on a low heat while you're getting your other things, leave it off the heat because the oil can always reheat quicker than anything else that you're doing, okay? So for, for this example now, I'm going to leave it off the heat due to having more oil in the pan. I'm going to get my separate white tongs for these ones here and use the raw into this, okay? What I'd like to do also put a little bit of salt on him okay we also can add while we're here a little bit of pepper on him here we goes lovely lovely after that we are going to get some time and with the time we won't need a huge amount we just need a little little amount like that there we go perfect 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 we're going to take the board or the plate preferably the board because you should be chopping on a board over to the stove okay now this is on a low heat we're going to pick it up and we're going to just put it in in one motion like this when you're putting in anything into a pan whether it's chicken a fish any kind of meat if it's got oil in it then we should always place the chicken away from us because if we place it towards us then the oil might splash and it's going to hurt so therefore, we're going to keep it away from us and we're just going to leave it on there on 
um, low to medium heat now we're going to turn it up now it's in we can slowly turn him up and we will work under the same principles when we're cooking any other type of poultry fish meat or anything that we can see that when the sides are starting to whiten they're starting to look like they're cooked okay you see half and half there is going up the side so it's looking like it's cooked the bottom's getting there so what we'll do is we'll wait till that's halfway up then we'll flip them over for me i'm going to leave this here for two seconds on a medium to low heat just as is and we can start working on plating up the rest of the things and making a stock okay now with the stock this is a chicken stock always keeping an eye and a mindful eye on what's cooking here now as we can see and we can hear this is bubbling it's very much cooking away for us okay so what I'm going to do is flip him now there we go guys we're going to go straight under okay I'm going to go away from us you see that's nice white colour it's cooked evenly because we've butterflied it okay straight back on and I know now that's going to take a couple more minutes two to three minutes maybe on each side you can also feel the chicken you see I can feel this from the side it's very soft it can go in it's very soft when it gives me a bit of resistance then you know the chicken is starting to cook okay with our stock cube same as before we're gonna try and squeeze him in the in the bag that it comes in don't worry about it if it gets everywhere don't worry about that just makes it a lot easier to make the stock when we are making it rather than it being in a cube okay don't worry about that I've got one stock cube there I have my warm water in my kettle that I've boiled from here and I'm just gonna add looking at what a hundred if that we're gonna add just a tiny hundred in there okay what we shall do now is get another stock cube from here and add half a stock cube so about 50 to 100 millilitres of uh, boiling water okay I'm going to press this down a little bit and just let him fall in there we go let him fall in cool the rest of it we can just discard that's fine I'm going to get my fork now and just give this a quick mix I have a fork on this side here and once that's mixed then that is our stock that we're going to add something else to it in one second okay now as we see guys let me show you here for a fact for myself being a chef I have the tools I'm just gonna get my fork off there thank you so this side as we see is our raw section so everything to do with raw is here okay now this is not raw anymore okay this is now cooked so we're going to use our different tongs our cooked tongs our good tongs to then flip him back over okay and we can see he's starting to get a good color on him here a good brown color around the side and if we fill this in here now we're getting a bit of resistance pulled back to us okay we can even open it up and you can see the insides there okay see that bit needs a little bit more cooking through so we're looking at probably one to two more minutes on this on a constant low to medium heat there we've just made our stock which is here what I'm going to do with this is add a tiny little bit of garlic in there okay and a tiny little bit of pepper the seasonings are the best part about cooking you can change any dish or make anything taste however you want just by adding a little bit of seasoning or a different thing to it okay what we're gonna do here mix that round there's our stock our gravy our stock is there okay the mashed potato we're gonna get some full potatoes give them a peel let's put them over here always guys whilst I'm talking whilst I'm doing what I'm doing I'm thinking and keeping a mindful eye on what's going on here okay if we get this again and we see that we only needed one to two minutes now that size the same color okay so for me what I'm gonna do is just put him on the back and turn that down low 
if we see there was a little bit of oil that was splitting around there it was popping up maybe it's gonna go on you it might hurt you in a such the matter of fact is take away one cup of oil from that one one little cup of oil from that i've added it so my chicken doesn't stick and i can show you guys exactly how to cook this properly okay with your potato you're going to peel your potato off peel it off same again guys straight hand if you are worried about your little finger you can press him against your hand here and use that press him against there so your finger you see is always away and it's going to push these away also with this we're going to use the whole knife if possible one clean chop like as such there's your potato and again guys we'll not put it on a rolling angle if we ever put it on a rolling angle we always have that opportunity for it to roll and cut into our hand okay we shall not cut on a rolling angle it needs to be stable okay it needs to be solid right after this we can do the same chop it down that is a perfect size for a mashed potato okay if you want your things doing quicker mashed potato doing quicker you might not have the time or whatever it may be you can then do it again in that same way hold in and you should get four okay this then will go into a pot this size you can get round about if you're eating for yourself i'd say three four of these small to medium sized potatoes in there covered with boiling water after that we'll leave for about again 10 to 15 minutes once they are in there they look done if you get a knife a sharp knife if possible you can take one out you can do it in the water as we can see with this raw one it won't necessarily go in and i have to pull it back out it's giving giving me something whereas if i do it with one that's boiled or cooked it will go straight in and straight out and that's how we know that our potatoes are there they're cooked okay when we're mashing the potatoes, we can keep them in a pot like this. We can add a knob of butter, maybe two knobs if, if you do like your butter, of course. So a knob of butter for me, for my mashed potato, for myself, would be around that size. Now, obviously, it's all down to yourself. You could have it as that little small little size, or you can have as much as you want, preferably. That one size for me, perfect. Like we was just saying, guys, let's always add a little bit of seasoning into everything that we're doing. Now, with the pepper and the salt, we don't have to add a lot. So with the pepper, we can literally just chuck him on. Just by a tiny, tiny bit, tiny bit, tiny bit. Same with the salt. If you're not a big fan of salt or you don't really like the salt, then you can just give it a couple of springs or you can turn it so it actually comes through. Okay? With this here, we're good for that. 10 to 15 minutes on there, strain them off, get all the water off them. We'll get them then through the mash, give them the mash. The butter goes in as you're mashing. You can also optionally add milk, 50 to 100 milliliters of milk, and then keep mashing and you'll get a good consistency of mashed potato that will look something, guys, like this, okay? There's your mashed potato, you want the consistency fluffy you can feel it's very fluffy there it's a nice mashed potato guys that very good now back to the chicken with our chicken sometimes we can find it let's call it a little bit difficult on the stove to cook the chicken because people and everybody will think maybe it's raw maybe it's not cooked maybe it's not now if you're one of these people we can do this you can get yourself a tray as such and we will get the chicken let me move this out of the way for you guys so you can see exactly what's going on here okay we're gonna put this down like that get my broccoli off there and then with our chicken okay we can take him off put him in the middle what I do is just add a little bit of that in there okay and then we'll add a little bit of that in there okay this can then go to the side the reason for this is this will keep cooking lovely with the juices in there and also our juices will be all in the stock here now which will be fantastic so our stock and our gravy is really starting to take shape something else that we can operate in this here what i'm going to show you you can take a corner of this off guys okay and leave him on there finally chop him down okay 
because this is the the very edge corner bit that's browned off so we we are 100 percent sure that this bit is cooked so it's the smallest bit on the chicken okay we're going to add him into the stock okay with this we can also add onions we can add anything that you like this is going to make the stock a little bit more a little bit more chicken a little bit more homely that we get back to the chicken guys into the oven that we get we're going to preheat our oven round about 160 150 that's fine if you can get to the 180 stage perfect you just have to turn it down as it goes preheat for around five minutes like we said before safety is paramount at anything that we do in the kitchen so when we are opening the oven do not just dive into the oven because you're excited to put your chicken in and eat your Sunday mini rolls because you're hungry. I understand that. Let's take our time, okay? And we can just open and let the air come out itself. Okay, perfect. If I was to then preheat my oven and go straight in and open it, bath, the air will hit me in the face and I'm, it's very warm. Okay guys, very, very hot. This chicken, I'm going to put on the top shelf of the oven. As we know, heat rises. So the, at the top, it's going to cook a lot quickly. So we do not need to so much worry about the chicken now. That can go in the oven for around four to five minutes. What we can do is then start to slowly put this on the plate here okay don't worry about how it looks guys because I've been doing this many times before so I can do a special technique quinoa to this and start adding little little bits into it like this but as long as it tastes nice sometimes it's not about what it looks like okay we're gonna plate these up on here like this if you can get your nice big ones that are all about there I'm gonna put him there this is adding great color to our dish as well guys as we see we're gonna get some nice colors here you can also change if you don't like carrots and you don't like broccoli you can also use things such as peas or green beans there's loads of different things we can use here if you're more into the colors then we can look at all different kind of colors there as well okay so that chicken is about there I would say it's probably about 20 seconds away guys okay 20 seconds what I'm going to do is then tidy up the rest of my stuff as I'm going so then when I've finished my plating I can eat my dinner and I haven't got to come back to then tidy everything up when I've got a nice full belly okay so that's going to go on the side I'm going to put all my ingredients back on the side or back in my cupboard it's going to have a nice little wipe off a little wash off okay with this stuff here I'm going to put them to the side here's my board so then that can get wiped off okay guys that's all done ready to be washed when we finished our dinner there we go or in the washer if you're lucky enough to have one these days guys perfect okay we're gonna leave them there that chicken is there I can I can smell it I can smell it and at the same exact point you'll be able to smell it too okay so let's pull this out of this oven Remember what we said? Let's not dive straight in. Let's just take our time with it. How we always should do with cooking. We should always do it within our own time. Just because I did this within five minutes or 20, if it takes you an hour, keep going at it, keep going at it. Don't worry. So, pulling out this chicken from the oven here now. I'm gonna rest that on the side, it's nice and clean. Look how much area we have to work with now, okay? because we clean as we go. So, when we get to the chicken stage, we can see this chicken here, if we feel it, we can feel it has a bit more resistance now to, to when it being raw, okay? When it's raw, we'll be able to just push it and you'll be able to feel it going, and this is resisting me, so you know he's cooked, okay? If you're ever unsure if it is cooked, then there's no harm in finding the biggest part of the meat and just having a little cut in, okay? And we can see, perfect, absolutely perfect that is. Guys, remember, if the biggest part of the meat is cooked inside, the smallest part is definitely cooked inside, okay? So we shall always work on the biggest part of the meat. Now, what we need to do 
is we're just going to put him up here, rest him on there, okay? We're going to move all this off here, and we always need a clean plate because nobody likes to eat off a dirty plate, okay? No matter where you are or who you are or where you're from, you should never have to eat off a dirty plate. This can go back on the side, okay? We can turn off our hobs now because we are done with them. That's perfect, guys. And then onto our stock, we're going to slowly just pour him on. Okay, we're going to pour him onto every little bit that we've got because it's going to be a strong stock, so you're not going to need a lot. Okay, it's probably about as much as you need. That chicken then inside, guys, would have got all the taste into the stock from that pieces of chicken also. You don't need to put that on. If you want it, by all means, chuck it all on, however you need. That's just for the stock. Of course, you can make a gravy, which is the exact same aspects. Your gravy granules will go in. You'll have about 100 milliliters of warm water, boiling water, as. stir it round, off we go. Guys, there is your mini Sunday roast. <laughs>